Hello, this program is called Delivery Mishap. And as you can see, it's all about a delivery gone bad. Delivery of boxes. They're fired into the air and they fall to the ground. And the physics modeling is, should be realistic with the exception of the fact that the air resistance is not modeled, the drag due to the air resistance. But the gravitational um, acceleration should be correct. Let's look at how this works. Here's the code. It's all in a single JavaScript file. Not too long. 102 lines or so. Most of the work is done in this particle class. That's um, Each box is one of these so-called particles. Um, so we'll look at that. Uh, after the particle class, you'll see p5.js setup and draw functions and a draw ground launch function some kind of utility functions here so let's go through and um, let's start with the particle class the um, it has a constructor I have a note here about the units meters meters per second meters per second squared and um, so first we're creating some instance variables for the position, velocity, acceleration, the current rotation angle, um, angles, the rotation velocity, the speed of rotation, and um, when the object was last updated. The, um, so let's look at how this works. CV is just a copy of the create vector function from p5.js. So we're creating a vector for the position. It's originally at the origin. Well, you notice the boxes came from the bottom left. You might expect the origin to be in the center with p5.js and WebGL, but I've relocated it to the bottom left where you would expect um, from the coordinate system, quadrant one. And I've also, I think I'll jump down here and show you this, translate in scale world. I've also used scale to change the direction of the y-axis so that it goes um, up, so that objects move up as you increase their y value. Um, so I call this translate in scale world. And also the boxes are drawn in units of um, meters, and that has to be scaled. So I figure one meter on the screen should take 30 pixels, so that's this 30 pixels per meter and a little margin so the box isn't drawn right at the bottom left and then we translate so this first part takes uh, half of the width that's what moves the x part of the origin to the left and then this moves the y part of the origin down um, so then we end up at the bottom left and then the scale multiplies everything by 30 and flips the direction of the y-axis. This function is designed to take a block of code and then the block of code gets performed after the translate and scale and inside a push pop block. So pushed works like this. You wrap it around some code and it does a push and then it runs your code and then it, it does a pop. The velocities are computed using Perlin noise and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about it, but it's a way of making randomness with some kind of order to it. So it looks a little bit more natural than just random numbers firing the boxes off in different directions. So I have this function that produces the Perlin noise and you give it a... Um, I'm not going to talk about the first part, but the um, range. So I want numbers from minus 10 to plus 40 for the X component of the velocity. So that means some of them go a little bit to the left, most of them go to the right. And then for y, they go from uh, a velocity of 10 meters per second to 70 meters per second. And then for z, um, negative 30 um, meters per second and up to 10 meters per second. So um, negative values on the z-axis make the boxes go um, 
away from us, but some of them will come toward us. Then the acceleration is simply the acceleration due to gravity at the surface of the Earth, and that's this 9.81 meters per second squared. And the rotation starts at zero. They're not rotated when they're launched, but they have a velocity, the x and z parts of it, so they rotate on x some random amount between zero and tau um, uh, radians per second. So tau is one complete revolution. So they go between zero revolutions per second and one revolutions per second on x and also on z. I tried using random rotation for x, y, and z, but it just looks unnatural. Then the noise x plus equals 0 0.1, that's used to generate the Perlin noise. Okay, that's the constructor. Let's look now at update. Update gets called to move things and rotate things, the particles. And so if, um, the, if we're still moving, in other words, we haven't embedded ourselves in the ground yet, then we will calculate the time in seconds since the last update and then change the value of last update. And this is a kind of a shortcut for the P5 vector mult function that multiplies um, vectors. So we're computing now the, the change in position, the change in velocity, and the change in rotation. Um, and those are computed from the instance variables multiplied by how much time has elapsed. So let's say that 0.02 seconds have elapsed. We multiply 0.02 by the velocity vector. And that gives us how much the position should change. So we set the change in position to be some portion of the velocity based on the time that's elapsed. Then we update the velocity based on the acceleration. So this um, slows things, slows the boxes down as they're climbing or speeds them up as they're falling. And then the rotation change is the rotational velocity multiplied by the small fraction of a second that's elapsed. And then we take these change values and we add them to the position, the velocity, and the rotation. And that's what makes things move and rotate. Draw, here's a kind of brown color with a black stroke for the edges of the box. And then here's this pushed method. So everything in here goes in, go, has a push and pop wrapped around it. And we translate to the position and we rotate to the angles, the rotation angles, and then we draw a one meter uh, squared box. That's the draw, and that's the end of the particle class. Here is an array of the particles. This is the time of the next launch. Um, nothing special about the setup. It uses the whole window width, most of it, and it's 3D. In draw, here's the sky color, and then we do the translate and scale world. Everything in here gets translated and scaled, so we draw the ground, and then we draw each particle, or actually for each particle we update it and then draw it. And then we call launch to create more boxes. Draw ground is a big um, box at the right place. Launch. We decide when in the future we're going to launch the next box. And that's the time now plus some random fraction of a second. And then um, if it's time, then we create a new particle, push it onto the array. And then if we have a thousand, uh, if we have more than a thousand, we remove the oldest one. And I probably should change this because a lot of computers could render more than a thousand boxes at a decent frame rate. I should probably change it so that when the frame rate lowers beyond some threshold, then we should start removing boxes. Uh, then we compute the time of the next launch. I talked about push, and I talked about this, and this is the function that just, I like to deal with seconds here rather than milliseconds, so this calls the P5 millis function and then divides it by a thousand to make seconds. 
So that is delivery mishap. And look in the description for where you can run it and where the source code is. See you next time.